Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. We just did a video about uh, open wire line and how that all works, and I thought I'd do a whimsical little exercise today that might explain why open wire line has such low loss. It has to do with the impedance of the line. So, let's take a look. I call this a little whimsical exercise because I'm going to ignore so many effects. I'm going to look just at ohmic losses. In other words, when the current goes through the wire, it creates heat because the resistance is not zero, okay? So we're going to try to answer the question, why does everyone love ladder lines so much when coax is so much easier to handle? So we're going to look at ohmic losses only and assume everything else away, including frequency effects, but it will still leave us with some very interesting conclusions. We're going to discover that higher impedance open wire line is much less lossy than coax for one single reason, and that's impedance. Now here are the assumptions. We're going to be working with 100 watts, um, let's just say CW, okay, key down. That's going to be the same antenna in every case, it doesn't matter what it was. We're going to have a one-to-one -one SWR. Now this is really important one-to-one -one SWR, which means we will need suitable balance um, both at the radio and at the antenna, okay? Uh, we're going to be dealing with 100 feet of transmission line, and we're going to assume in every case a 16-gauge copper wire conductors. Now, that will give us about 0.4 ohms per 100 feet for a single conductor, but there are two conductors involved, including in coax. Coax, you've got the center wire, and then you've got the braid return. Uh, in a flat wire line, you've got uh, uh, two wires, so it's 0.8 ohms per 100 feet for two wires. Now, I'm not going to take into account any frequency-related effects. Um, as you know, a uh, transmission line gets more lossy as the frequency goes up. But we're going to ignore that for right now. Let's just take a look in the antenna book here at the copper wire table, which is table 25.1. We're going to pick 16 gauge wire because that's really common in uh, this type of antenna uh, and uh, several forms of RG8 coax have 16 wire center conductors. The ohms per thousand feet at 25 degrees centigrade is 4.094 or 4.1. Uh, for ease of uh, calculation, we're just going to call it 4. So that's 0.4 ohms per 100 feet. Okay. So let's look at the 50 ohm case here. This is 50 ohm coax cable RG8X. Assuming that the braid is about the same equivalent gauge as the center line, um, and we're going to start with some equations here. E equals IR. That's Ohm's law. Okay. Uh, e times I. That's the, that's voltage equals the current times the resistance. Uh, this power law is voltage times the current is the power in watts. And if we substitute for E. Here, since E equals IR, we can come into here and plug in IRI or I squared R. Okay. Now, in a transmission line, any transmission line at radio frequency, the impedance or Z, and we probably ought to make that a, oops, a Z not. Uh, because usually the characteristic impedance is referred to as Z naught, um, is the ratio of the voltage to the current. See here? The ratio of the voltage to the current gives you the impedance. All right? Um, P equals IR. Let's see, where am I screwing that up? Uh, if you solve this for R, R equals E over I. 
r equals e over i okay so the impedance is the ratio of the voltage to the current the higher the impedance the lower the current that's very important if you go with a higher impedance then that means the voltage is higher and the current is lower that's the key thing here so for a 50 ohm cable like uh, coax 100 watts is i squared r or i squared times uh, 50 for the uh, in characteristic impedance, so I squared equals 2. So I is 1.414 amps in uh, the coax, okay? And uh, for most conditions, uh, you can use RG80 uh, coax for that without an issue. But the ohmic losses are I squared R, it's I squared R times 0.8, which is the resistance per 100 feet and then circle back another 100 feet. That's 1.6 watts loss in the cable just due to heating the cable, okay? Now, at different frequencies, it doesn't matter the frequency, you've still got this ohmic loss, okay? All right, and now I'm gonna call this zero dB reference to RG8X or zero dB coax. 1.6 watts loss. Now remember this assumes 1 to 1 SWR because if you have a higher SWR the current that leaves your transmitter hits a mismatched antenna and gets bounced back. So the part that hit the antenna gets radiated but some of that is sent back and the part that is sent back is subject to the resistance in the wire. So the higher the SWR, the greater your losses are going to be. But we're not looking at that in this video. Now let's look at 300 ohm twin lead, okay? So for 300 ohm cable, 100 watts equals I squared R equals I squared times 300. So I squared is 0 0.333. So the current, instead of being 1.414 amps, is quite a bit less than that. It's 0.57 amps. So the ohmic losses are I squared times R or I squared times 0 0.8 is 0 0.333 times 0.8 is 0.27 watts. Okay, that's compared to um, 1.6 watts. That is 8 dB less loss than the coax due to ohmic considerations. Again, remember this assumes a 1.1 SWR. But now you notice something interesting. If you have a mismatch at the antenna, you get power that comes back and power that goes back this way. But each time it's gonna lose a little, but overall it's gonna lose eight dB less than you would lose if you were using coax, okay? So it's even more interesting if we go uh, to 450. Okay, for 450 ohms, we've got a little under half an amp. So ohmic losses are 0.17 watts, which is 10 dB less than the coax, okay? Again, the assumption of 1 to 1 SWR. And if we go to 600 ohm ladder line, we pick up another dB. So we're 11 dB less than um, the amount. It's 0.13 watts compared to um, 1.6 watts. So that's where we get the minus 11 dB. So in conclusion, open wire line is less lossy than coax because of its higher impedance. The higher impedance means more voltage and less current. It's the current that creates the heat losses. So you might ask, well, why doesn't everybody use open wire line? Well, as we talked uh, in the last video, uh, there are issues with um, keeping the uh, transmission, transmitted energy in the line and you can't let it touch other objects and stuff like that. It's a little bit more of a pain to deal with. Plus, you need a ballon 
at your transmitting end and you probably need a ballon at the antenna. A lot of people do away with the ballon at the antenna. But here is the bottom line right here. If you have a high current situation, such as a high SWR, for example, you have a doublet. A doublet, by the way, is like a dipole, except it's not resonant. It doesn't have lengths that are resonant. So you can use ladder line to feed it and a tuner to take care of the non-resonance and make everything copacetic, okay? It used to be, back before World War II, everybody used open wire line, okay? Because coax had not made its way into popular consciousness by then. It took World War II to do that. So if you have a high current situation, such as high SWR, then go with an open wire line. Loops, especially horizontal loops, um, dipoles that you've been having trouble matching, uh, things like that go with an open wire line. Now I want to put a coda on uh, yesterday's uh, comments about uh, open wire line. The distance between the two wires must be much less than a wavelength. And so if you're starting to use open wire line for like two meters, about the max you want to go is 300, maybe even less, and get those wires closer together. Otherwise, the transmission line starts to radiate on you, and which it's going to do in any unbalanced situation, but assuming everything's perfectly balanced, you want to use like the 300 instead of the, the 450 window line. So there you go. Okay, so we've taken an interesting kind of whimsical little look at the basic reason that open wire line is considered to be so much less lossy than coax. In fact, we showed that the amount of heat that would be generated in the ohmic losses from RG8X coax to 600 ohm ladder line is actually 11 dB less, more than a factor of 10 less. So um, that's a very interesting thing to think about if you're going to put up an antenna and it's a little far away or it's got very weird matching characteristics like a loop or something like that you might want to use open wire line uh, be sure to get the ballon in there right the impedance like in ladder line which is the most common open wire line uh, is 450 ohms and requires a 9 to 1 ballon Okay, that's a transformer with 3 to 1 turns ratio, but remember we square the turns ratio to get the impedance uh, transformation for that. So, now you're armed with that great information and you can go forth and do great good in the world. So, if you'd like to support this channel financially, please uh, uh, look at dcastler.com support. And please subscribe, and until we next meet, 73.